Hello, hello, everybody, and good day to you. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. I have a friend here with us this afternoon. His name is Key Wendell. Hey, everybody. It's Key Wendell from Eastern North Carolina. Beautiful, beautiful. Today, Key, we are here because you have been doing something for quite a while, for a number of years, many years, as a matter of fact, uh, related to your heart's passion and some things you were involved with, the way that you were raised, the things your dad did. And it has to do with appreciating veterans as, as a whole. But you've got a kind of a unique way of, of looking at this. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yes, thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, guys, for, for many years, um, uh, first of all, to kind of set the backdrop, I'm what's called an Air Force brat. And that's not a derogatory statement or, or meant to be uh, putting anybody down. Brat is a term of endearment of children of veterans, um, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, uh, Coast Guard. Their children are referred to as brats. Um, I'm a 60 year old brat. Um, I'm the son of deceased retired Major Dick Wendell. And I lost my father in 85. Uh, he, and, and I was young, I was 20 some years old. Um, and this has been good medicine for me over the years as I, I spend time with his comrades and I go to their reunions and I wanted to do something, uh, to give back to them and to recognize them and, and to, to, um, keep them in memory, uh, share their stories and where I grew up. Uh, in Eastern North Carolina, I lived next to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, and the, the, my, my fellow classmates through all school, grade school through high school, were all most of us are brats. And I started doing reunions, and we did Oktoberfest, made it fun, and got a couple hundred of us together um, from all over the country. They've moved on, you know, with their lives and have children of their own and everything. But we get back together, and we we have a reunion and we do a fundraiser and the fundraiser that I chose was to support veterans and their needs and it has really evolved it's grown over the years and I've met many wonderful people as you'll learn through this presentation beautiful wow thank you so very much listen I have got some uh some pictures that you shared with me that I'd like to talk a little bit about first one I've got is actually a picture of you and two little boys and they look like they're in uniform could you tell me about that um, yeah, there, that picture is, um, was taken in 1965, um, at, on the tarmac at Spangdalem Air Force Base. Um, and that's me, my dad, and my brother, Rick. Um, I'm the littlest one in the picture. <laughs> I would have guessed you were the biggest, but that's pretty cool. You also shared a picture of a man standing outside of a yeah, and I know that's your dad. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Um, yes, Jeffrey. That picture was taken in 1969. Um, that picture was on the tarmac at uh, Dad was was stationed TDY in Tok Lee, Thailand, when he uh, was involved in the Vietnam conflict. And that is my father standing in front of an F-105D, a D model. Um, and that, that plane is, is loaded and ready to go on what they call a shorty or a sortie. I'm sorry. Um, and that's him preparing to do what he does. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now you had, uh, explained some of the missions that he went on and there's a, there's a mission patch at the hundred mission patch that you'll talk about later but you've also got a picture of your father getting out of his aircraft <laughs> it looks like he's getting hit with a water a water hose what's going on there um that's called a finny flight f-i-n-i -I. and when a combat fighter pilot completes his tour of duty um his last combat mission when he comes off the tarmac canopy open um his, his the war's done for him and he is honored by his comrades uh, with a hose down. And uh, it's tradition, <laughs> it's tradition that goes on today. Um, it even, it's even involved into the civilian world. Sometimes you'll see uh, 
if a veteran comes back from war uh, and paid the ultimate sacrifice and his body's on board, sometimes at even a commercial uh, airline, the fire, the, the, the fire crews will come out and they'll shoot water over the entire plane. So if you're ever on a flight like that, that's just respect being paid. Wow. Wow. I had no idea. Um, one I liked here, you, you showed me a picture of your dad and somebody else in there. Look like they're pretty happy. And you had explained that that was an end of a tour smile. And when, when was this, this picture actually taken? When did your father end his tour? That was 1970. Um, and you see the 100 mission patch on the gentleman. I've tried to find out who that is, the other pilot. Um, and I've not been uh, successful at, at, at learning who he is, but, you know, it just would be nice to know. Um, children of veterans um, stay in contact. Um, I have people, I mean, there's Facebook groups, but I have friends and, and we communicate um, and stay in touch. And uh, it's just a pretty tight, tight knit group of, of, of people in it and its families. Um, and I think that has evolved into what on passive is evolving into um, is we're family. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moving ahead just a little bit. I'm also looking at a picture here where oh, you got a tie on, where you're presenting a check to an executive director. I guess it's the uh, Air War uh, Courage, Air Warrior Courage Foundation. Can that's you correct. Yeah, that's correct, little? Jeffrey. That's that's Dave Broggs. He's the executive director of the Air Warrior Courage Foundation in Washington, D.C. As I said, me doing what I've done, it's evolved into me meeting some pretty uh, respectful people. And wow. um, the money that we've raised, um, that's a pretty significant check that I'm handing to Dave. Um, and that goes to the Air Warrior Courage Foundation, which is a charity that I support um, it's a great, it's a four star rating with Charity Watcher. Um, it's run by veterans. There's no administrative fees connected to it, which is something that I love about Obless is and Ash, Ash is going to, the company of On Passive is going to eat, if you will, the uh, administrative fees for, for the Obless program. And I just kudos to Ash for doing that. Man, amen. Yeah, I love that too. Um, I'm also looking here, you got another check, that's a big check, uh, size-wise, is being uh, presented to the, war, uh, the Wounded Warrior Project. It uh, looks like, oh, in your hometown there, or your, your stomping grounds, Fayetteville, North Carolina. What's going on there? Yeah, that was, uh, that was at the office for the Wounded Warrior. This was the first time uh, that I did my Oktoberfest, and we raised a significant amount of money, and, and in the picture, um, are some childhood friends of mine and the lady to the to the far right um, or left, however you look at the picture, uh, she is the, the person with the Wounded Warrior Project. Is That's the program that we supported that year. Um, we also support healthcare uh, services, uh, hospices, and, and things of that nature. Just things that me and my, and I do this through barbecues and get togethers and reunions, and, and I couldn't do it without my friends. Now, you know what? It looks like you've been doing this for quite a while. When when did when did, when was this happening right around these times, the, the, what we're talking about here? Uh, this was, that was 2013. Okay, so you, um, yeah, you've been, now that's 10 years ago. You've been doing this for, holy smokes. Yeah, wow. we've, we've been doing it for a while. And um, I've been to... I've been invited to, to many veterans uh, meetings and reunions and I've gotten to know um, even groups outside of the Air Force. Um, there's a group here in down in Fayetteville, CXC, and they do a remarkable ride every year to honor uh, their fellow comrades that have fallen. And they, they do a motorcycle ride from California to Arlington and they stop off at families and visit uh, families that have, have lost a loved one. That's, that's incredible, man. Um, you had talked to me about, and you actually gave me a picture here we're going to be looking at, um, that uh, I guess it was Commander uh, Lamb, Alan Lamb, a combat pilot, Alan Lamb, 
where he's signing a flag. Can you talk about that a bit? That looks really, really, that's a lot of signatures up there. Yeah, that was a flag that I had made by the Heritage Flag Company here in North Carolina, and they do pretty remarkable, unique work. Um, that is the YGBSM flag. And if you want to know what that stands for, Google YBGSM wild weasels and you can get the story but that gentleman that is signing it is in his 90s and he was the first combat fighter pilot to take out a sam missile site in the vietnam war in f100 uh with his wow. rear his rear officer iwo was jack donovan um wow that that's history being signed right there Holy that, smokes. And that, that flag is on display at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina at the Officers Club. So Alan Lamb was the first pilot to shoot down a surface-to-air missile, a SAM, in Vietnam, the Vietnam War. Wow, man, that's it. Yep. I'll bet you people are wanting that that picture. Wow, that's, that's incredible. The gentleman uh, that's with him was the wing commander. Um, and he sent me that picture. That's Doug Thies. Um, and Doug, has, he's no longer at Shaw. He's moved on in his military career. Uh, but yeah, it was when Doug sent me that picture, it, the hair on my arm stood up. It's if you know anything about aviation history and, and war and, and who that gentleman is, um, it's, it's pretty remarkable that I'm somehow had something to do in, in recognizing his accomplishments. Wow. Now, you had mentioned a position in the airplane, I guess you said, EWO, Electronics uh, Warfare, or Weapons Officer, actually. Correct. Uh, the next picture that you had shared with me was a young man. Uh, well, he's not that young, is he? I mean, he's got a 100 mission patch flag, and he was one of those EWOs, uh, Stan Goldstein. Can you talk to a little about that? Yeah, I, I got to know Stan Goldstein at the 50th reunion of the Wild Weasels. Uh, we became buddies, and... Uh, I did the, the flag that is, is right there with him. I, I did it for a handful of guys. Again, the Heritage Flag Company um, out of Southern Pines, North Carolina. Keith made that flag for me. It's engraved with his name. And I just, I sent it to him. I'm like, you know, Stan, thank you for what you did. Uh, Stan was a electronics weapons officer. Um, he sat in the rear seat of a pilot in an F-105G and he steered the pilots on track and on course to the, the targets that, that they were trying to take out. And that was what the electronics weapons officer did. It's pretty incredible, all this stuff. Um, you had mentioned the flags from uh, the place here in North Carolina. How exactly are they made of, uh, made, and, and what are they made of? Keith makes those from uh, whiskey barrel stays the, the the lat stays that that a whiskey barrel is made of and he's made he's actually got a phenomenal business with that um he has sent flags all over the world uh to veterans and services i mean he's got a flag there's one at the pentagon um he's had his flags fly on air force one uh marine one um heath is has done remarkable service um he's worked with gary sinise um, Gary Sinise is somebody that I respect ultimately. He, he helps build homes for veterans, smart homes that make their lives independent. And Heath is a integral part of helping me recognize veterans and their services to our country. Very, very cool. Now you had mentioned with the uh, YGBSM flag, you also threw a term in there, wild weasels. And I see there's a picture of you presenting one of these flags. Can right. you talk about that? It looks like it's happening in Dayton. That is uh, the presentation of the, I'm going to go ahead and tell what YBGSM is. Um, and you can, if it intrigues you, you can read more about it. But YGBSM, it, it's an active term for a squadron at Shaw, the 20th Air Group. But YGBSM stands for you got to be shitting me. Um, and it was, <laughs> it was, it was how the electronic officer, Jack Donovan responded to a classified briefing when they were told what they wanted them to do. Um, and that, that phrase from Jack Donovan has stuck to this day. And if you go to Shaw Air Force Base, <laughs> see the 20th Air Group patch 
on a active duty fighter pilot's arm, it'll have YGBSM on it. That is me and uh, Doug Thies presenting the YGBSM flag at the 50th reunion of the wild weasels in Dayton, Ohio. And there's probably 250, 300 people in that room. Um, and being put on the spot in front of those guys, um, it, it was you, my honor. Hey, do you remember what year that was? When, when did that When did that happen or close to it? Um, I think that was um, maybe 2016. I'd, okay. I'd have to go back. Yeah, yeah. so that was, still, that was still a minute ago, man. That's like, wow, wow, yeah. um, wow. And actually the other flag that is behind Doug Thies, I have that flag at my home um, and I have visited uh, veterans that could not make the reunion to get their signature on the flag because these flags are not for me. Um, I've got, my home is like a military museum from my dad's stuff. These flags, I, I got these signatures of these flags because I'm going to donate them. Um, I have one flag that's going to go to the Combat Fighter Pilots Museum in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. And then the flag that's behind Doug in that picture is actually going to go to the U.S. Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. Wow. Wow. Now, you also have Doug on, um, since we're talking about Doug or, you know, uh, Officer, um, yeah, Doug, thesis or Thies. You've also got you standing with him. He's in a flight suit and there's a big flag on the wall. What what is that? I mean, that's that kind of, is, is that the, the one that the other guy was signing? That is the one that Jack Donovan was. I mean, I'm sorry, Alan Lamb was signing. Um, and you'll see it's in another picture as well. Um, these are large flags. Um, and that is Doug Thies and I standing where the flag is on display. Um, it's it's called the O Club, but I think they kind of merged them. It's their historical hall. And we are standing in front of the flag and took a picture. Um, I went down to an air show at Shaw to see it on display. After I presented it, me and General Huggins went to Shaw post the 50th reunion in Dayton and presented that flag to the squadron uh, at Shaw Air Force Base. And then they in turn displayed it. Wow, wow. Now, you've also got a picture of a friend of yours that you went to high school with. Um, looks like he's got, well, he's holding the flags and he's, you know, he's got the, uh, uh, picture of uh, somebody in a flight suit there. What, what picture is this? That's Mike Large. Um, uh, Mike Large and I went to high school together. Um, and we both, we played football together on, on our high school team. Um, that is the gentleman in the flight suit is Mike's father, Chuck Large and Chuck did earn his 100 mission patch. Um, Mike had since lost his father and didn't have anything from his military uh, oh. services. And so I had this flag made up. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, I think it's my cover picture. There's like six of those flags. But I, I did that for Mike um, to, to give him something, memory of his father. No. Uh well, that's that's unbelievable uh, but that's i mean that's that's so heartwarming you know it really really is and you have mentioned uh the 100 mission patch flag qu quite a few times what exactly is that can you give us the uh, significance and the meaning of that particular uh, patch when the uh vietnam conflict got kicking up and the air war started uh combat pilots were um usually it's a year tour of duty but they were given uh they were recognized, I would say, when they had completed their 100th mission flight in combat. Wow. And once they completed that task, their tour was, was over and they could return home, back to their home base. Um, and actually to tell you, many, several guys signed up for another 100 missions. Um, but it's, it's a milestone, it's recognized as valor and honor amongst the community of fighter pilots that these guys are recognized as living and surviving a hundred combat missions. Um, 
the I don't want to get into the political war of what went on in Vietnam through with the Air Force, but uh, the attrition rate for these guys was 40 percent. It was a 40 percent chance when you took off, you were going to get shot down by shot down by a, a SAM site, SAM missile. Man, that's that's saying something. If you can complete, first of all, if you can complete 100 missions. Right. But secondarily, to, to come back on top of that and volunteer for another another tour, that's crazy. Um, you were telling me about the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, um, Commander uh, Thorstis. Can you clue us in on that a little bit? I see we've yeah. got a picture of it here. Yeah, that's a picture of me and Leo Thorsness. Uh, Leo, very humble man. Um, I got to, to meet him at the 50th reunion of the Wild Weasels, the YGBSM flag. That's the flag um, that I had the guy sign, and he was gracious enough to take a picture with me um, and and spent some time with me talking. We talked about my father, and and it's you know it's just good medicine for me, Jeffrey, to spend time with these guys. Yeah, and, you know it's 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 my heritage. It's, it's how I grew up, and uh, I just I love recognizing these gentlemen. Yeah, well, I can certainly appreciate that. Especially how long you've been doing this, but man, you got a you got a list of people. You know who's who here. You were also with uh, Brigadier General Huggins, and it looks like you're standing next to a flight suit or somebody's flight suit. And what's going on here? Where's that at? That's at the United States Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. And yeah, that that gentleman is Larry Huggins. Um, he does not like to be called General. Um, when you meet him, it's it's Larry. Um, he, he's a hundred mission guy, uh, combat veteran. Um, and, uh, actually I can stand at my front door and look at Seymour Johnson and an F4 that he was the, he was the commander of the 334th. I can see his jet on a pedestal, an F4, um, and his name is on the side, but Larry and I are very dear friends. Um, he lives here in North Carolina and he's associated with the museum in Hickory, North Carolina, which yep. um, I, I do a lot of work with. But yeah, Larry's, Larry's a dear friend. Wow. OK, so the, the picture I'm looking at has got Larry uh, with four people there. It looks like uh, you and his son and some other thing with another flag right in the middle of you. What that's you said that's in Hickory. My old yeah, Jeffrey, that set um, we call it ham. Um, Hickory Aviation Museum. It's at the public airport in Hickory, North Carolina. Um, and this was another, this was a gift from the Heritage Flag Company. Um, oh. I talked with Heath about Larry and Heath wanted to make a flag for Larry, uh, recognition of his services. It's embroidered with, or, or it's engraved, I should say, uh, with his squadrons that he, that he was involved with. To the right of Larry is his son, his son was actually a Marine that did many tours in Iraq, Afghanistan. And uh, the last I knew of, of his son, he was working in the Pentagon. Um, and to my left is Kyle Kirby. Kyle is the director, the curator of the museum in Hickory. And uh, I work very close with, with those guys. Wow. Oh, sounds like it. Um... There's a picture. The next picture we've got here is, again. It's got you and a half a dozen folks in in flight suits. What that looks like a pretty. I mean, that's 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 in the middle. Of, you're on the flight line there, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on the flight line at uh, Seymour Johnson, and this uh, there's two gentlemen that are missing from this picture. Um, these are the gentlemen that did uh, a flyover uh, for Mike Cooper, Michael P. Cooper. Um, another combat veteran, dear friend of my family's. And uh, these gentlemen were, were very, the whole squadron, the 334th, was very kind to the Cooper family. And in, in recognition and thanking them, I had this flag made and presented it to them along with Heath Trigg. Heath Trigg came to, to Seymour and we presented that flag to the 334th. And that flag hangs in the, in the headquarters squadron at the 334th and actually that picture that you see there is with the flag um, on the wall in, in their headquarters. Um, so it's uh, like I said, close knit group and I'm, I'm just a 60 year old brat, but 
Seymour and aviation's been in my blood since the day I was born. Well, it it looks like it looks like it. I'm telling you, because there's another guy here, Greg White. I see that he's got a, a hundred mission patch too, and those things were not easy to come by. You know, no. I, I no. who was who was Craig? Craig White's another combat pilot, hundred mission guy, and uh, Jeffrey. If you remember, I did a trip to Florida about four weeks ago. Now yeah. I think it was. I drove. Yeah. <laughs> uh, war, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was in a 24 hour time zone, I drove 18 hours. Um, I drove down to meet with Craig and another gentleman. We were planning to go to a, a uh, an air show at Titusville, which is right next to NASA. And uh, it was just way too crowded. And Craig, uh, he's like, I, I can't do that. So we met at a Cracker Barrel and Craig had his son with him. I got him to sign this flag because it's history. These guys are history. Yeah. And um, wow. I wanted yeah. his signature on this flag because this flag that I had him sign is going to, uh, it's actually a river rats museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The museum's under construction. It's being built now and it's close to being done. Um, once it is done, I will take that flag to Bowling Green and, and present it. and It'll be on display there. Wow. Very, very nice. Now, um, there was another fellow that you were associated with. You were talking about uh, uh, Commander uh, Bodenhammer. And he's got a mission flag too, a hundred. I mean, we make it sound like these things are there are a lot, but yeah. man, getting a hundred a hundred sorties under your belt—that's wow. What can you tell me about uh, Commander Bodenhammer? There are only two pilots that I know of today that are alive that I can sit down and talk to. And they can tell me they remember, I mean, they spent time with my dad. They knew my dad. They flew with my father. Um, out of all of them, I only know of two. Uh, Larry Bodenheimer, or I'm sorry, Howard Lee Bodenheimer. Uh, I call him Blue. Uh, Blue is one of those two. And uh, Blue and I were able to spend some time together, not at the Weasel reunion, but at the Combat Fighter Pies reunion also in Dayton and uh it's just cherished memories guys it's these these are people that connect me to my father wow you know this is this is really neat I mean you've been doing this for quite a while and that just shows your history and what you're doing with this but our whole uh, the reason for for being here today you and me with this is to bring light to your support of veterans, that this is not a new thing. You've been doing this for your entire life. You're very active in the last dozen or so or 15, 20 years. Um, but we know that we're we're really looking at funding more support for the veterans through the the um OBLES that on passive has. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and your aspirations toward that? And then perhaps what I'll do. Uh, once we're done with our little interviews, I'll slap a couple of extra flies on the on the tail end of this about Old Bless and where we're going and how we can contact you and that sort of thing. And, you know, just where where this whole thing is going for you and what you'd like to see. Yeah, thanks, Jeffrey. And thank you for all your work on this with me. Um, my aspirations with this is to share what I'm doing, what I've been doing long before on Passive came into my life. Um, but now I'll be able to do this. I, honestly, I think it'll be easier to, to, to raise funds for veterans needs, but not only veterans, you know, your local firefighters, your local EMS, school teachers, whatever is true to your heart and what you have passion about, you'll be able to share it through on passive and the OBLES program. What I've done for the past decade is I've just gotten my childhood friends together we had a, I rented a building, cooked a pig and had a barbecue. And, you know, we, we just had fellowship and spent time together. And I told them when I did that, I'm like, if we're going to get a couple hundred people together, we're going to find a We're going to support a cause. We're going to, we're going to support something that means something to all of us. And all of us were air force brats or, or predominantly most of us were. And, and that's how this whole thing evolved. But my passion with helping veterans um, and just keeping their history alive 
I want to continue that with the Oblast platform, and now it'll be so much easier to do uh, through through on passive. And I, I just want to encourage other people to to whatever you're passionate about and what you want to do, you'll be able to do this um, fairly easily and connect with people in your community, in your backyard, and where your needs are through the Oblast program. And yeah, and I just got the, the heads up that. Uh, the, the platforms make me run out of time here, but you and I were speaking yesterday and you were talking about how this doesn't have to be <clears throat> closed to the veteran, but rather any first responders, whether it's medical or whether it's fire department, whether, you know, whatever it is, right. People with the right frame of mind and the right heart set can use Obless and use this as a jump off platform for whatever kind of support they want to do. And I thought that, that was incredibly, incredibly insightful for you. I agree. Wow. All righty. Um, thank you so very, very much for what you're doing with all of this key. I certainly appreciate it. I appreciate very much being a part of this. I'm going to put some more stuff at the end of this, and I will be talking with you about uh, ways we can get a hold of you and things like that. So, and we'll also put this up and be careful. You, you never know what you started with this. I, I think this is going to be around for a while. We have a lot of fun with it. So thank you so very much for your dedication, your support. The veterans all over. I know my wife and I are, are veterans. I know that we appreciate just even from the outside looking in what you are doing and what others that you work with are doing as well. And you're right. You're keeping it alive. So thank you so very much. Well, thank you so much for all you do, Jeffrey. And all righty. You have a wonderful afternoon, everybody, and we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye. And for those of you that don't know who On Passive is or what we are and the things that we do, On Passive is a artificial intelligence information technology company that builds fully autonomous SaaS products, and that's uh, software as a service products, right, using the latest software technologies, including AI, everything we've got has got AI in it. Our cutting edge technology and the AI that we put in everything, it brings a very competitive advantage to our stuff, right? It brings innovation, uh, fresh perspective to business and that product innovation and digital transformation strategies. They're all allowing us to reinvent business models and to help our customers, you know, to help you and your businesses achieve a whole lot higher operational efficiency. And we're actually enabling game changing AI driven solutions that are easy to use. They're adaptable and they're extremely scalable. I mean, we can get really, really big, really, really fast. So this is all to say that on passive provides cutting edge products and services that are fully automated. They're fully integrated. They're absolutely insanely affordable, and they are all under one roof. So life is going to be pretty good for you, right? Now, speaking about uh, good, there's a single product within the digital ecosystem of OnPassive called Obless. Obless is a non-profitable platform that helps raise funding worldwide. The beautiful thing about this is that every penny that comes in for the cause goes to the cause, right? It, uh, you can also connect with donors and companies that you want to support. You can have complete profiles and causes for the supporters, create admin pages, campaigns, reports. You know, you can upload videos. You can have complete profiles for these folks and not only just customers, but for your donors. And you can have them permanently on file. You can also have uh, money from different countries with a multi-currency feature. And it's got search features in it, right? It makes your work a whole lot easier. You can search by profile you know, time, horizon, size, country, industry, all that sort of thing, and based on other, other criteria as well. So it's going to be a good, good thing for you to get involved with, no matter what it is that you want crowdfunding for or whatever cause is close to your heart. Oblast is going to be a way to do it. So thank you so very much for listening to this. Please uh, just Google on Passive if you want to know more. Uh, there's a million and a half founder uh, folks out there. Uh, you can also go to onpassive.com. There's also a link down in the description box below. And I would certainly ask that you would visit Key's site. He's just getting a good YouTube channel going. Uh, I've posted his uh, YouTube address uh, in the description box, and it's on this uh, here. So whatever you decide to do, though, going forward, just know that we only want to bless you and your family in whatever it is that you choose to do. Thank you.